Here we are. Here we are. Once again, welcome back. Welcome back. And um, we acknowledge the fact that you haven't seen Fang in a while. <laughs> to remedy that, we have chosen to film at his dinner time. So it's Scream O'Clock. He will start to sing the song of his people. Yeah. And when he becomes too much to bear, we will feed him. <laughs> <laughs> welcome back to Hardy's Books. I'm Laura. And I'm Ross. And today we are filming our monthly book club. Yes. And what have we been reading this month, Ross? Uh, well, Laura, this month we have read... Oh, God. Well, Laura, this month we have been reading... The Book That Wouldn't End. Burn, Burn, <laughs> by Mark Lawrence. <laughs> that one's your one, because that one dropped in, you dropped in the bath. Yes. And this one is my one, because Which it's didn't. Christine. <laughs> Because I didn't touch it, I listened to the audiobook. So this is your fair dues warning, folks. Uh, goes without saying, but there are spoilers for The Book That Wouldn't Burn by Mark Lawrence. Henceforth. Henceforth. Um, if you watch this video and you get upset that we've spoiled this book for you, cry me a river. More fool you. More fool you. <laughs> I will get out my tiny violin. <laughs> Okay, so first of all, how much did you know about this book before we picked it up? Um, I knew from you um, that I didn't necessarily trust Mark Lawrence, um, having heard um, things I didn't much like about Prince of Thorns, but um, I was excited to dive into an author I'd never read before uh, in a world that is based on one of my loves, which is places with lots of books. Yeah. So I expected um, that to be a, 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 a something that I would really enjoy. How about you? Yeah, so I should say from the get-go that I tried to read Prince of Thorns mm. many years ago and I DNF'd it almost immediately um, because of the prevalence of violence against women and that is a hard red line for me. Mm. My opinion of Mark Lawrence was somewhat clouded by that experience. However, um, we have several very good friends that really enjoyed this book. Mm. Mare at Lady Mare Reed. Andrew Luke, Watson. Andrew the, Watson. Yeah. The Fool's Tale. Yeah. Um, I spoke to Mare. She said, you know, there is none of that in this book. And it's, she's right. It, none of it. Yeah. Um, so I tried to go into it with as much of an open mind as I could. Mm -hmm. So those were your, your expectations. What surprised you about it? What weren't you expecting that the book? Really. It was more wholesome than I was expecting. I think I agree with that. Yeah, um, there was. A, I, I love the kind of found family trope. I mm. love, I loved the, I love the, the settings. Mm -hmm. I loved, I love the library. Mm -hmm. There was a lot that I liked about it. Yeah, that I wasn't expecting to find in a book by an author that I had previously like violently disliked. Moving on from that, I guess yeah. that, that leads nicely into the next question, which is how did the author use the settings and the atmosphere of the book to enhance the fantasy and the mood of the story? Yeah, I mean, it's a story about a massive library. Which... And, you know... We love. We love. Bookworms like us, bookworms like Mark Lawrence, mm. will obviously have spent a long, a lot of time in libraries, in bookshops. You know, there is a, a familiarity about those places. Um, you could, it's probably quite easy for him to go into his mind and call upon images of amazing libraries that he can that he's been to that he can then scale up um, and I think that that is is very effective you know it's a it's a beautiful interesting place mm. um, I thought the dust was interesting as well that was an interesting yeah. setting too yeah 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 that was I wasn't expecting. I was expecting this, the book to start in the library. Yeah. It started out in a place where there were no books, basically. Yeah, but yeah, it was that was a surprise, but I think it enhanced. Mm. Um, it enhanced it because it wasn't all in the library. It was also in the city. It was mm -hmm. also in the dust. I found it kind of interesting that it seemed to imply that as humanity um, kind of went on and the sabbers, you know, went on, that the rate of their societal destruction, of their self implosion, um, seemed to increase, um, causing there to be like you know you, you're you're essentially you're having an apocalyptic event when there's basically only a, what sounds like a few major cities and mm. the rest is just like a a land like a, a you know a, a des desecrate what's the word desolated desolated is the word I'm looking for thank you uh, landscape so there was I think that was really 
uh, there was a, a, a sort of imminent apocalypse vibe, mm. but also combined with, again, the desolation of the wasteland. So, it, so you have two things going on there that match quite well. And then the safety and security of a place where there's a lot of books. What did you think of the exchange? <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> that was, I think, too weird for me. I'm... I've basically, I'm going to say, <laughs> up until that point, I've spoken about all the things I liked about the book. Oh. The wholesome atmosphere, the the, the world building. No, actually, a, a few other things too. But I think the point at which the exchange appeared was the point at which I started going, I don't think this guy's in control. Mm. Like, it's just hard because, you know, I mean, an author should, you know, they are the ultimate captain of their book. Yeah. And so you think... Okay, well, they they must have a really clear concept in mind, and and be able to kind of something they want to express and put down on page that they know so deeply. So when the exchange came in, and it felt like he was almost like mixing his metaphors, mm. that he was he built this place that was very conceptual, but the concepts I thought were a bit ropey. I thought it was very clever. You thought it was clever? Yeah, I Tell thought it was a that. clever idea. All, like portals to and from different points in history. And I thought it was interesting that um, it transpired that Elvar, Elvar and... Um, uh, what's his name? Lavira. Lavira. <laughs> I loved this book, clearly. <laughs> I thought it was interesting that their, the way that they saw the exchange was different based on what they were expecting to see. I didn't like that at all. Oh, really? No, I really strongly disliked that, actually. Oh, gosh. Um, yeah, I know. I thought that was quite clever. Okay, well, I mean, it set up the the the, the central heart of the book of, 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 you know, humans and sabbers learning to love each other um, and, uh, and them having the opportunity to see each other as each other. Yeah. Uh, um, so in that sense, it worked. But um, I thought that was a... I thought that was very lazy. <laughs> um, I didn't Has like it at all. Happened? I don't think this has <laughs> happened in one of our videos before where we've disagreed. <laughs> when it got to that, where Lavira was start started going like, oh, I think we see what we expect to see. Where I kind of went like, oh, okay. Ooh, so, right, so this, okay. <laughs> it didn't feel strong to me. I've got to be honest. It didn't feel like a strong plot point. I thought that was quite... Week. I mean, I realised at that point that Elva, that Elva was a sabber. At that moment when she said, oh, I Is think... it Elva? Is it e Eva? Eva. Elva. Who's Elva then? I don't know, Elva. Elva's from, um, from your, from, from John Oh, Wynn. that's right. <laughs> <laughs> there was at that point that I realised that Eva was a sabber. Oh, you realised quite early? Yeah, as soon oh, okay. as she said, I yeah. think I see what I'm expecting to see and you see what you're expecting to see. Mm. I was like, oh, okay, so they're different species. But you got that much earlier than I did. Really quite early on. Mm. I was like, oh, okay. And in fact, I was saying to, to Mare, I was like, are we about to have interspecial, mm. carnal... But mm. there was, for a period, I was like, oh God, we're about to have smushing booties. Mm. Which kind of did happen. I mean, they, you know, if you remember, the Vera says at one point, like, we hung out in the evenings. We had lots of fun in the evenings. No, that was, that, that but was wasn't good. that like inside the mechanism? Well, yeah, but I mean, okay, but I. Uh, okay, oh yeah, what? The, the, the mechanism. Yeah, and that's, <laughs> again, kind of the mechanism <laughs> and all of those kind of um, heady concepts of, you know, you see what you expect to see, all of that. Um, the thing is, is that it makes the readers, the picture that the reader is holding in their brain very loose. It didn't give me enough to grasp onto. So that like when you go like when you're trying to picture paint a picture in your mind and you've got the Vera going like, oh I see portals, and you've got Evar going, oh I see pools, um you can't decide which one to put in your brain. And That's so true. and so then your your picture of the exchange is then weakened. That you're is going true, like what you are, don't know yeah. what you're supposed to be picturing. Am I supposed to be picturing big trees, small trees, crows, no crows, grass, sun? I pictured it as pools because that's what Evar was seeing mm. and i feel like did evil get to the exchange first 
Yeah. Yeah, so that's what I env envisage. And then did you have any issue then changing that image when the Vera was the person, was the per perspective? Yeah. I, it, I, it still continued to be pulled. The cat has begun. <laughs> How did the author present the magic system in the book? Is it really a magic system, the mechanism? Um, is this close to a magic system? I guess, I guess that's part of the magic system in that, I think, okay, you could probably pull up a few, few elements. Mm. You've got the mechanism. Yeah. So the ability to go inside a book. Love and that. And to, to experience the content. I'd love to do yeah, that. Yeah, quite fun. It sounds good. So the next question we've also kind of touched on mm. is how did the author portray any other races or creatures in the book? Mm. The main one being the Sabbaths, but then at the end, randomly, there was another third <laughs> third species, which literally in the final chapter of the book, I was messaging Ross like, who the hell are these guys? Could have foreshadowed that a bit more. Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> I can't even remember what they were called, but suddenly, randomly, there was another ra third Species. And where the hell do they come from? Where did they come from? Why are they killing everyone? <laughs> they're suddenly there in the library too. I don't think that was explained. <laughs> or was it? Or were they in dreams? I don't know. No, that, don't that, that, far, that final sort of f 10 chapters or so, I completely lost track of mm. what the hell was going on. Yeah. Um, I went back and found Spark AI notes mm. to try and work it out. I still have no idea. <laughs> oh no. What was going on? <laughs> on the races. Yes. I something. Okay. I, I thought that the I thought that that was fine. Interesting two races. I think what I did like actually was the crow, or mm. the raven. Even sorry, the raven. Loved him. And the dog. Loved the dog. Yeah. Best part of the book, maybe. I, those <laughs> the, the any time spent with those companions, I think, were the times that I enjoyed the most. The um, narrator of the audiobook really enjoyed being the raven. Yeah. <laughs> Could have gone harder. Could have gone a proper. Oh, no! <laughs> Did the main characters have any special abilities or powers that made them unique or powerful? Well, Levero has the, that kind of a, an uncanny ability to learn things fast. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. She went from being completely illiterate to being able to read in several languages in the space of a couple of months. Now, mm. I understand why Mark Lawrence did that but that is not believable. Mm. And I'm willing to suspend my disbelief enough to believe in a magical library that never ends and mechanical crows that will lead you through portals to past and future times. I will not believe in <laughs> a child that can learn to read and write in several languages in two months. Sorry. Mm. I, I feel like I would believe it if perhaps she had been coded more as an okay i think this is a really good opportunity to have more represent representation in this book and perhaps to code her autistic mm. and to actually have made a point of that um because i mean there are savants i mean it's it's a cliche uh, you know about aut autistic people being savants um but if mark lawrence wants to make that kind of more accessible to more people maybe mm. although then maybe he would have been leaning into a cliche so it's, it's dicey territory i don't but i would love to see more neurodiversity represented in books um it, it's i feel like that was a that was an opportunity but the way in that he presented her was just as a very curious child that asked a lot of questions and then casually was able to memorize entire language systems mm. sorry mm. no it's fair it's fair yeah. So we're moving on to the character questions, actually. Because we've just been talking about how she changed and grew um, in her abilities, the Vera, mm. throughout the story. Um, on the other hand, Ivar... Didn't I change at all. Didn't really seem to change. Kind of started the story kind of naive, ended anxious. Ended the story. Ended the story naive, naive and, and anxious. anxious. Didn't really have much. And it was quite, a, it was quite difficult to see exactly why the Vera latched onto him she's as, just curious she, yeah she's just like there was another was kind of weird as well that she started out as like she started out as like a small child yeah and then for eva mm. over the space of two days she goes from like a child to an adolescent to a fully grown woman mm. and in the space of those two days he's making out with her i don't think that 
Pourquoi? Laura has said angry and French. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that affected me too much. I, I just thought it was, it was weird. Kind of weird. It was it's just weird. weird and creepy yeah. and kind of gross. Okay, one thing that actually kind of really quite annoyed me about the characters was that all of them had such profound author thoughts. <laughs> what makes a character believable is if their interior thoughts are realistic and relatable. So if you're giving them interior thoughts that are like, so here's a paragraph, I literally just opened the book and here's a paragraph. She could have followed him, but she needed to get back. She clutched reflections on solitude to her and began to run in the direction the assistant had indicated. Lord Algar couldn't be allowed to take this away from her. She had too many questions that needed answers and the thought of the quiet satisfaction he would take in her eviction ran like acid through her veins. Is the way that she is constantly thinking like four steps ahead or like, how is this going to affect my story? Yeah. And, and that just really grated on me in the end. The problem is that so many of these characters have such long protracted moments where they're by themselves. And so we're stuck in their brains for chapters upon chapters. Especially Eva. Especially Eva. How can you tell I didn't really enjoy this book that much? I'm on a rant now. Just a, <laughs> a path off of that. A, a path off of that is I really think Mark Lawrence thinks he's being profound. And the problem about being profound is that it doesn't really work when you think you're doing it. I don't think a weird like, comparison I can make. Is okay, yeah. A lot. <laughs> this is an issue that I had with the picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. Yeah. Is so many things that one of the characters in the picture of Dorian Gray would say just really annoyed me because I was like, you just think you're being so witty and so clever, and you can see that it was just a authorial insert of Oscar Wilde going <laughs> There you go. Yeah. Oscar Wilde thinking he's being I mean <laughs> maybe Oscar Wilde could get away with it. Yeah Oscar of... Wilde can get away with it. <laughs> Mark Lawrence You have to be pretty good to get away with that kind of thing. I just thought like he was he spent a lot of the book just trying to be profound and that again it grated on me. Like I think this is my kryptonite. This this that kind of actually no no Tamsin Mirror is my kryptonite. Um <laughs> This is, just, this is set out to make the entire internet hate <laughs> How did the secondary characters impact or influence on the main characters or the story? Ute is fantastic. We like Ute. We like Ute. I like Malar a lot. I thought he was really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I like some of Lavira's friends. Mm -hmm. I like Milan. I like Ar 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 Arpix. Arpix. There's quite a, a comprehensive cast of secondary characters. Mm. And then on like Ivar's track, there's like the soldier and the assistant. There's mm. Clovis, Darvis, Starva, Starvel, Starvel, <laughs> Starvel. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was a really mm. strong kind of ensemble. Yeah, a strong secondary cast. Yeah, less strong primary. We're talking about going back to those moments where you know Livera is interacting with someone, being the best bits. Livera and Arpix, um, in like were the most interesting part of this book, I think. Mm -hmm. Like, when they had that interaction with when the dog was there. I uh, loved that, that. That was great. That I was mean, wonderful. Could have done with a lot more of that. I think that would have been really, yeah, really good fun. Yeah, that was really lovely. I really liked that a lot. Good dynamic. I, I mentioned Malar. Mm. I thought he was really, really interesting and I would have liked to have spent more time with him. Yeah, yeah. He he goes from the at the start. He's another character that grows throughout the book. Yeah, he's got real growth. Yeah. Real growth. And he said some interesting things when they were first approaching the city about like leadership and how um, being a good soldier doesn't make you a good general. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like he was a really interesting character that had so much potential. And I think it's a real shame that we didn't get to see more of him. I have to say, I'm trying to defend this book from Ross's scathing attacks, but I didn't find the characters particularly compelling. Um, I liked the secondary characters. I thought they were they were well written, um, but Lavira and Eva I did not find. I, I I got like nearly to the end of the book and I realised I still don't really care if they die. I just didn't care. I was just like, I don't care about these characters. I don't care about this situation. Mm, okay, I think I have an antidote to that. I think um, what would have made me care maybe not for you but what, but what way would have made me care is i really think this would have made a good novella i think if he'd had 150 pages mm. it's just to tell much it, too long so by the time you get to the end and the story's coming to conclusion and all of the big events are happening you know like the plot is accelerated you're exhausted yeah and 
none of the you've forgotten what you're supposed to care about none of none of the more, more interesting world building kind of matters anymore you no. kind of like oh i've kind of been exhausted through weirdness yeah it's it was and, at least 50 percent too long yeah i could say 70 percent too long you know if you want an example of a book that explores an interesting place well i can't point to a better example than piranesi mm. which kind of feels like mark lawrence read piranesi and was like i could do that <laughs> <laughs> a good as a good lesson is if you want to build conflict intention people talk about like delaying res resolution of conflict or delaying kind of like you know stream the reader out but there's a point where you go too far yeah when you... they when they just stop caring and that's exactly what happened to me yeah i got too strung out and i stopped caring like, like butter spread over too much bread exactly kill skin Spread over too much bread. How did the author create conflict and tension in the book, and was what was the main conflict or problem in the story, and how was it resolved? Okay, well, I mean, the main we can point to that. The main conflict is humans versus sabers. Yeah. And the sabers are, you know, encroaching on the city, approaching the city walls. That again, one of the more effective parts of the book. And then the there's also for for Ivar, he's trying to get out of this library that he's been trapped in for his entire life. Yeah, but he does. He gets out of there pretty quick. Mm, but then anyway. he's just stuck in the exchange. Well, he could have gone forward in time and checked out some of the future places, gone there. Maybe they would, doors would be open in the future. So the, I think the main conflict is that tension of like, okay, um, humanity is on the brink of disaster. Yeah. And, um, and there was some very effective outside. world building in that yeah. aspect. The whole, we mentioned the dust, we've mentioned... The Sabbers genuinely were very scary. Those first couple of chapters yeah. where Livera is coming in from the dust with Millar. Um, they were genuinely really well-written chapters, yeah. very compelling. That was very, very good. I enjoyed that. It was unfortunate that when once Livera had arrived at the library, it was a slog. There was mm -hmm. a long slog. And a few people that I spoke to agreed that there really is. Mm -hmm. It slows down a lot in the middle yeah. until, you know, the big fight scenes at the end when mm. the sabbers are attacking okay so what were some of your favorite scenes in the book i touched on a few i think yeah the the scene with arpix and Levera with, with the, the dog, dog is that great. was lovely that was good i mentioned when Levera was coming in from the dust with um with malar yeah I, I liked the allocation scene with ute that was quite good um, some of the earlier bits I really enjoyed. Mm. I remember you being quite optimistic going, well, like, yeah. you, you were kind of like giving me positive vibes. You're talking about getting hard back. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was really enjoying it early on. Mm. I thought, this is great. I liked, uh, it wasn't really a scene, but perhaps something that something that did stand out to me is when the fire started in the library. Well, that was good. That was pretty cool. Um, it was the best part of the last bit was that kind of them fleeing the fire and then sort of like the question in your mind like why don't they just why don't why this is a magical library why can't they put the fire out and then discovering that the fire is actually kind of like a mechanism that the library has you know uh that that kind of it will there's always a fire burning somewhere in the library mm. that it kind of is the way there's the recycling of knowledge and the restocking of the shelves kind of also restocking the tinder um i thought that was quite Quite a, a, there was a, a, a complement of good world building plus stakes. Mm. So that was probably the most interesting scene, I think, for me in the book, was, yeah. true, was the fire. That was interesting. But there were some interesting twists too, uh, which you saw coming. Which I predicted I didn't see coming. all of the twists. You predicted all of them? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> nice. Even I even predicted that Lavera was the um, assistant. Yeah, that you did. Uh, absolutely i predicted that the library was a metaphor for the internet that didn't pan out no <laughs> it's, this is it this is wreck it ralph <laughs> i didn't predict that malar became the soldier but actually if no. i'd given that any length of thought i probably would have come up with that as well mm. i have read a lot of books <laughs> so we're approaching we, we need to we need to <laughs> we, we talked a long time let's let's talk about the end of the book mm. um or more to the point, what end? Well, <laughs> there was a point. So the audiobook for this book is 22 hours long. I looked at my Libro FM and it said, you've been listening for 15 hours and somehow there was still seven hours to go. And I was like, how? How is there still seven hours to go? 
I don't understand. Mm. What what is there still to do for seven hours? And yet, how much more wandering around a library can there <laughs> possibly be That's from a woman with a booktube channel? <laughs> Despite this, the book just stopped. Well, <laughs> so you string me out for twenty-two hours? <laughs> I am a woman with a booktube channel with a personal library in it. We moved house because we have so many books. And I got bored of reading about the library. Are you okay? Are you okay? <laughs> and then the end no. of the book. All right. <laughs> take your take your pills. Take the pills. Come on. This the end take. of the book was take. just. I know where to find your girl. End. <laughs> ah! What were the main themes or messages about the book, Laura? Knowledge is power. Francis Bacon. Um, God is dead, Friedrich Nietzsche. <laughs> How relatable or re <laughs> relevant are the themes or messages in the book? I guess you could say, um, uh, don't open Pandora's box, AI, shit like that. I don't know. Fuck it. Final <laughs> thoughts and ratings. Uh, could you, okay. <laughs> if you could ask me the one question about this book, what would it be? Um, did you think about hiring an editor? Would you recommend this book to someone? <laughs> Not sure. Don't think so. Um, we have once again devolved into madness. Shall we rate this book? We, we've been talking, ranting, going crazy <laughs> for a while now. Shall we rate the book, Laura? Bring this to a close. I will give it 0.5 out of one mechanism. It wasn't as bad as Red Rising. Uh, that is true. I've got to give it credit. It wasn't as bad as Red Rising. <laughs> Um, there were flashes of potential and genius. I really did love the early bits in the dust. I really did love the wholesome vibe of the library. What about you? I would give it the 150 page novella it should have been out of 566 pages. <laughs> <laughs> what does that so what does that like work out in a five star rating? That's like one and a half, I think. Wow. That no, bad? it wasn't that bad. Um, it really wasn't that bad. Okay, fine. Okay, I would give it uh, maths. So I'll go with you. I'll give it 283 pages that could have easily been cut out of 566. I think <laughs> there were good things about it, um, but um, as we've been talking about it, I've realised that I really didn't like it. What do you think? Has, has this discussion changed your rating at all? No. No? No, I, I knew how I felt about it. Mm. I didn't realise how violently I was upset about the end. We kind of created a bit of a feedback loop. <laughs> Baby uh, <laughs> kind of bounced off each other a little bit. <laughs> anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this slightly chaotic video, which yeah. I feel like I say at the end of every video. <laughs> it's been getting worse. <laughs> yeah. Have you read the book that wouldn't end? Um, sorry, the book that wouldn't burn. Um... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that was my joke. She made my joke. Do you agree with anything that we said? Do you agree with nothing that we've said? Is the sequel better? We would. I'd be interested to know. Yeah, I'm actually tempted to read the sequel. Oh, really? Okay, I'm not, but fine. What are we reading next month, Ross? Well, uh, let me pick it out. More optimistic about this one. Uh, next month we're going to be reading Promise of Blood by Brian McClellan. McClellan. <laughs> Brian McClellan. The first book in the Powder Mage I've got really high hopes trilogy. for this because friend of the channel, Sam Harrison, loves this book. Yeah, I think it'll be good. Yeah. Um, how many pages is it? 548. Yeah, but if it's more engaging than this, then it's fine. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, let us know your thoughts. If you have read The Book That Wouldn't Burn, if you have read Promise of Blood, let us know your thoughts about that too. What um, do you think about joining us? Yeah, um, we are on Instagram, we are on TikTok, we are on Discord. Um, we're very active on Andrew Watson's server, so head over to that if you want to talk to us while we're reading. Yeah. We will be sharing our thoughts as we read. Give us a follow on all of the above. Links in the description. Links in the description. Um, give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And we also uh, run a modern first edition slash rare and antiquarian slash signed 
slash cool sci-fi fantasy esoteric bookshop. Yeah. Hardysbooks.co.uk. So go over there and buy a book. And if you are local to the southeast of England, pop into the Lewis Book Fair. And you can meet us in the meat space. We'll be at Lewis Book Fair on May the 11th selling some of our wares uh, so you can come and say hi. In the meantime. In the meantime, have a lovely May. Um, happy reading. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.